on the last video. We break rules all the time. And so it continues. Well, that was a uh, successful evening of waking up and talking to a lady. I've read this note already, I do believe. Nope, it's a different one. Huh. T. Elwood's medical file. Patient Thomas Elwood, male, age 28. Followed by Dr. Tippett's status convalescence. Date of admission, September 16th. Date of release to be determined. It notes, the patient's face has been heavily burnt and disfigured by a bomb during the war. Even with the use of the strongest sedatives, he affirms to regularly endure severe pain from the wounds, as if the flames are still burning under the skin, he says. Examinations of the coconut tissues show no trace of inflammation, infection, or swelling. Scars are clean. Could it be a case of persistent nerve damage? The patient never ceases to blame himself for his disfiguration. Could it be a case of guilt of the survivor? Phantom pain manifesting as a punishment for not dying with his comrades. Maybe. I did, in fact, play uh, Metal Gear Solid 5, so... Uh, if I'm not a medical expert about Phantom Pain yet, I don't know what I am. I am not a medical expert of Phantom Pain yet. Not at all. That's okay. But I'm gonna go talk to Thomas. I know, like, the main quest is a thing that exists. But I want to help these people. I feel for them. Thomas, I can sprint. I just remembered. Hey, man. How long must I wait, damn it? Blaming me will not further your agenda, sir. How long's it going to take to fix me properly? A month? A year? You have the right to disapprove of our methods, and you will kindly apologize when you're feeling better. Are you Tippets? Good evening, Doctor. I believe we're going to be working together. Dr. Reed. Dr. Swansea informed us of your arrival, but I could not dare to believe we'd have such good fortune. Such an honor, sir. <laughs> Thank you. And you are? I am Thoreau Strickland. Dr. Thoreau Strickland. I'm a great admirer of your work, Dr. Reed. Oh, you're Strickland Propane. Gotcha. Uh, tell me more about your life. Please, could you tell me something about yourself? I'm a great admirer of your work concerning blood transfusion, Dr. Reed. I run my own experiments. I'm convinced it's the future. Oh, you're a vampire. 2,000 quality, not looking too bad. I gotta level up my mesmerize. I don't know how to, but I got to. Um, what, a, what, tell me. I based my technique on my mentor's research. He helped me perfect my method. What is yours? I'd rather not talk about it. For now, it's just theories and first approach. My process is purely experimental and unsuccessful. As long as you're cautious and methodical, you may remain empty-handed, but you won't fail. You're not the first one to warn me, but I am convinced knowledge is the main weapon against the ravages of this epidemic. What made you choose to be a doctor? I'm not ashamed to admit you and your work have inspired me. I am honored to have the opportunity to work by your side. Hmm. It's always a pleasure to share scientific and medical knowledge with someone eager to learn. I'll be glad to help you if I can. This epidemic may be the century's most terrible disaster, but I'm convinced that we, as doctors, are the only ones able to defeat it. Yeah, generally speaking, anyway. Hmm. What can you tell me about the Pembroke? Well, it has always been an honor to work with Dr. Swansea. With your arrival, I can't think of a better opportunity to learn about blood transfusion. Oh, so Swansea is now old hat to you. I see how it is. Do you need help with anything in particular? Well, yes, maybe. I'm waiting for a batch of products I ordered for my personal research, yet my supplier seems to have vanished. Do you want me to play the errand boy for you? Oh, no, Dr. Reed. But if you went personally to his shop, what with your reputation and all, he wouldn't dare to refuse the products I need. I see. Well, give me the address, for I may pass by if I have time. You seem quite optimistic. It's a rare and precious attitude in these difficult times. I'm convinced that this epidemic is a test. A test of endurance and dedication for us men of science. Questions remain about our capacity to resolve the situation. True, true. 
Last summer, during the first wave of the epidemic, I used to joke with Milton about the extra work. We're not smiling now. You know what I just realized? Um... Me? How have I already forgotten my name? Holy shit. <laughs> um, I talk like a vampire! Tell me more about your willingness to experiment with new medical techniques. Harvey Fiddick is a patient suffering from a severe injury that could cripple him if not treated correctly. I'm convinced your blood transfusion technique could help him. What is it you really want? To save him or to prove your point? Fair question. I want nothing but to save my patient, Dr. Reed. Especially since I know Mr. Fiddick's story. Tell me Mr. Fiddick's story. Our first diagnosis was compromised because Mr. Fiddick lied to us about the real origin of his injury. He first claimed it was an accident. But why would he hide such crucial information from us? Because he is a proud father. Ashamed of putting his children at risk because of his own negligence. Hmm. Gotcha. Hmm. I guess I can finish the other one. Yeah, it's just to tap at all the, the things. This personal involvement could also appear to be a lack of impartiality. You must know that a good surgeon must remain neutral. I agree. But that does not excuse Dr. Aykroyd's behavior. A man who did not even take time to converse with his patient. Do you think keeping his distance was a mistake? All I know is that I'm taking care of human beings with desires, hopes, and fears. Not some biological machine comprised of blood, bones, and flesh. I like you, Strickland. You're a good guy. I'm not gonna suck your blood. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. I'll get your stuff, too. Also... You! Most... Good evening, Mr. Fiddick. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Any news about my operation? No, but I've learned things. Also, let me look at your details. Yep, got all the juice. I could totally, totally do it. It'd be so easy. I won't, but I could. Um, double checking. All right, you. Why do you feel guilty? Tell me about your injury, Harvey. Why do you feel so guilty about it? My wife died because of me. And now I may lose everything because I've been careless enough to hurt myself. What an asshole. What an asshole. Um... You can't hold yourself responsible for your injury, Mr. Fiddick. Unless you tried to hurt yourself. Of course I didn't hurt myself. But I can't work until my arm is fixed. My children need to eat, Doctor. Yeah, that's fair. How could your job be responsible for your wife's death? I was working a double. She went out to bring me a hot meal and got caught in a German bomb raid. That's not your fault, dude. That's really not your fault. I know you can't believe me when I say that, though. Um, I'm really curious. Can I do this? Is there anything else that's bothering you? Can I help in any way? I'm all right. Considering the state of this place, I should consider myself lucky, I guess. Yeah, true. Yeah, I mean... I guess I can't really do anything for you right now, buddy. I'm sorry. Goodbye for now, Mr. Fiddick. I'll see you later. Let you down, my boy. I believe in you, pal. Um, question. If I go in here, you guys are still chilling. Talk to you. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. That's good. Uh, can I do this? Do you need any help? I'm afraid I may, sir. I don't mean to be a burden. Do I have medicine to give him? I guess I don't. I will see you later. Okay, so that's how I actually would give him the medicine, is pressing RB. Gotcha. And I don't believe I have anything else. Yeah, okay. I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. Good evening, sir. Good luck. Doctor. Doctor. All right. So, that's been situated. You're Strickland, I believe, yes? Remember if I've talked to everybody. What about you? Are you the other guy? Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I believe we're going to be colleagues. Reed? Yes, I've been informed about your arrival. I'm Waverly Aykroyd. 
Welcome aboard, I suppose. Does my arrival inconvenience you in some way, Dr. Aykroyd? Let us just say that I don't particularly share Dr. Swansea's enthusiasm for hiring you. What we need here are reliable professionals, not overrated dabblers. Oh, so you're a dick. You're a... Got a lot of blood points there, too. Looking pretty good. Also, uh, I believe, Ac or not Ackroyd, Strickland, you're Ackroyd, said you were kind of a rude boy because you don't like to care about the people? What the fuck, man? If you have a problem with me, Dr. Ackroyd, please feel free to tell me. Dr. Swansea has imposed your presence on this hospital without asking anyone's advice. The benefit of his position. But I don't agree with it. I know we've never met before. But I believe this hospital could use all the help it can get. You will agree with that, I'm sure. Oh, but I have heard about you, Dr. Reed. Of course, you can't say the same about me, since I have not wasted my time courting the press. Oh. Oh, you, oh I know. Okay, I get it. Okay. So I'm like Gordon Ramsay, where everyone knows how badass I am in this field, but this guy's just always been going at it, not caring about getting the recognition. So he's like all, fuck you, you don't know you shit, fuck you, gay. Got it. Huh. Uh, jealousy. Aren't you too old for such jealousy? It really won't do you any good, you know. Don't be ridiculous, Dr. Reed. A simple glance is enough for me to know you have nothing for me to envy. Wow. Since your tenure in this hospital is longer than mine, Perhaps you can tell me more about this place. Let's just say I'm tired of the carelessness around me. I have always respected the skills of Dr. Swansea, but over time his enthusiasm has become displaced. Carelessness? Exactly what are you talking about? We're here to save lives. The people who trust us are not volunteering for experimentation. They're here to be healed. I don't intend to run any radical experiments, Doctor. Even if I, as any good practitioner should, express an interest in pushing the boundaries of medical research. Modern medical methods were created through audacity and ego. But there are rules in our line of work, and they're here to protect our patients. I just had an amazing idea. What if, I doubt it's possible, but what if they had the kind of free-form gameplay in this game where I could convert every single person slowly into my flock of vampires and like I could just turn this whole hospital into vampire people that would be so cool tell me Waverly what do you think of Dr. Strickland's enthusiasm for his experimental research Strickland is playing with his patients lives for pride and glory now that sir is unethical are you thinking about something in particular Harvey Fiddick needs delicate surgery I believe we should stick to the usual procedure but my young colleague obviously disagrees. Hmm. Why do you wish to lead this surgery? Why do you wish to lead this surgery? I strongly believe that Mr. Fiddick should not be butchered to test an unproven procedure. Uh, huh. Hmm. Other people may say that's too conservative a point of view. Conservative? And what are you going to say to Mr. Fiddick if he loses his arm because of the operation? Because that's what's going to happen if the surgery is a failure. Yeah, true. And are you not afraid that your rivalry with Strickland may be blinding you? Rivalry? I guess you could call it that. But I will never be childish enough to let my personal feelings affect my judgment. You're letting your personal feelings affect your judgment of me? Just saying. Uh, uh, more. Bad memories, uh, yes. I don't know what you've heard about me, but I have already proved my value as a practitioner. I don't question your skills, Dr. Reed, but your motive. Is it money, fame, or are you truly dedicated? And what exactly is that supposed to mean? I served in the war just like you. But unlike you, I did not use the wounded to play the modern sorcerer. Be careful what you insinuate, Dr. Aykroyd. I only want you to admit you used those men to improve your theories. Oh. Wow. 
This is ridiculous. My blood transfusion technique saved many lives, and you know it. You see? That is exactly what I hate about people like you. You avoid this kind of accusation instead of facing reality. Rude. It seems you have bad memories of your military service. I refuse to see this industrial slaughter as scientific progress. War only reveals the worst in men. We can at least agree on something, Dr. Ackroyd. Question, can I go back and do a different response to this? Uh, no. No, looks like I cannot. Okay. Well, interesting. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. Good day. I wonder if I can go talk to my friend and be like, Hey man, I want to get you sorted out, dude. Do you want to be a fledgling? Uh, no, not really, I guess. Shit. Ackroyd. No, not Ackroyd. Uh, propane. No, Strickland. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? It's sad that I have to remember your name via Hank Hill. I'm the worst kind of person. What do you think of Dr. Ackroyd's aversion to modern medical methods? It's a shame he's so narrow-minded. Dr. Swansea taught me that science is about exploring uncharted territory. I'm convinced that's true. With the influenza and all that's going on, you should put your differences aside, don't you think? Why is it so difficult to work together? I believe that if Dr. Ackroyd had been the one to discover the transfusion process, he would be the first to recommend its use. So you believe it's just a question of jealousy and pride? Dr. Ackroyd is as proud as he is blinded by his obsolete concept of medical science. I agree with that. I wish I could totally help this situation better, though. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. I should go see Swansea. I know he's sleeping. Or he was sleeping? I don't know. He said he had to take a nap, but that was yesterday, technically, so... Maybe he'll have something to talk about? I'm not sure. There's a lot of people I can hang with, so... Fuck it, let's just double-check everything. Yes, Doctor? Hello, ma'am. Uh... Don't you ever rest? Why, then, do you always work the nights? Don't you ever sleep? At the Pembroke, we're always hands on deck. Um, when do you sleep? Your dedication to the Pembroke does you credit, Nurse Crane, but when do you sleep? We staff get our sleep when we can, Doctor. Nursing is a vocation, not the labor of a journeyman. So do you go on dates still? Or is you just, life is this now? Lack of sleep and the medical profession always ends in disaster. I've witnessed many a colleague succumb to stimulants to fight exhaustion. Drugs were as deadly as bullets in the trenches. London's trenches start here at Pembroke Hospital. We are on the front line, make no mistake. Gotcha. Exactly how bad is the supply situation here at Pembroke? It really depends. Dr. Swansea deftly works his society contacts for monies, but with the quarantine, well, we're in God's hands. I like how she called it monies. Please, could you point me in the direction of the morgue again? It's the large boarded up building behind the hospital. You can't miss it. The key I gave you will open the small back door to it. It's large and boarded up behind the hospital? That's all for now, Nurse Crane. Thank you. If my experience with horror anime is anything to be taken into seriousness, that place is haunted, and this should be a school instead. Good evening, miss. Well, I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon at the Pembroke Hospital. And who are you? Your name has no meaning to me, mortal. You're nothing but dust blown by the winds of eternity. I beg your pardon? What are you begging for, mortal? My clemency? Well, tonight maybe I'm inclined to mercy. You'll never forget the night you met Thelma Howcroft. You keep calling me mortal. Why is that? And if I'm mortal, what are you? Well, Dr. Reed, if you must know, I'm a vampire. Whoa, that's crazy. Who are you really, Miss Howcroft? I mean, apart from being a vampire. Is that not enough for you, puny mortal? What do you require? Hmm? Proof of my powers? I'm curious to know who you were before becoming a vampire. No, it was such a long time ago, I don't remember. 
Centuries of unholy life can have strange effects on one's minds, you see? Hmm, I do, indeed. Uh, let's see. You're looking pretty healthy. Only a two? You must be a baby vampire. And why do you believe you're a vampire? I don't need to believe anything. It is what I am. It is what I feel within this hollow shell of flesh. Oh, you're like one of those people that wear wolf tails at high school. Please, describe to me how you feel. What is it like to be a vampire? I can hear my body crumble from the inside as my flesh cracks and fades. I sense the last pulse of postulant blood within my drying veins. I need new blood. Oh, do you want some of mine? I see. Have you ever heard of Cotard Syndrome, Miss Howell? Never. It's a mental illness discovered by a French neurologist named Jules Cotard. The affected patients are delusional. They believe that they are putrefying, that they are dead, a, a ghost or a ghoul, or in your case, a vampire. Delusional, you say? Oh, sad and petty mortal. You can't even begin to understand the concept of immortality. And you think it is I who am delusional. I know, I'm so sorry, I feel like a fool. I'm assuming you must be a patient here. Am I right, Miss Howell? It's only a cover to hide from my enemies. I can leave whenever I want. As a woman, a, a spirit, fog, or bat. Please, please, someone else. Who are these enemies you mentioned? Can you describe them? I cannot say for sure. But I sense their eyes on me from nearby. I, I, I feel them watching me every time I visit the garden near the morgue. Oh, I already fucked those up, don't worry. The staff here are not your enemy. They're here to help you, to care for you. I'm not speaking of the doctors in white. I'm speaking of the men and women who hunt me, for I am a vampire. I see. Don't worry. These people will not find you here. I'll personally make sure they leave you alone. Thank you, mortal. But do not interfere with them, for you are no match for those that hunt me. Okay. Silly. Uh, okay, I guess that's it for me. I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. They have disgust on every side. I like her. Uh, before, I, why, why do they... Okay, so, I know this is just gonna be a petty complaint here, but the this right here is start, and this is select. I feel like they should have reversed those two. But that's just my personal opinion, man. Okay, um, is there... Oh, here we go, local investigations, this is what I care about. You... Find out who is spying on Thelma. I am kind of curious about that. Reach the pharmacy. Oh, this is for this shit. I really should do that, huh? I will! I'll, I'll do about your thing in a bit, but... How about this guy? I'm just meeting a lot of people today. Good evening, sir. Can I help you? Unless you're here to fix my face. No. I don't think you can help me. I'm Dr. Reed. I've recently taken the position of head surgeon here. War injuries, am I right? You guessed right, Doctor. German shell took my pretty little mug right off. But they still call me Thomas Elwood. You know, if you look really closely, I can sometimes see your tummy and your, your gown is jiggly. It's really weird. Oh yeah, we learned about you when we read that thing. I remember. How is your stay with us, Mr. Elwood? Oh, it's bliss. I just escaped death in the trenches to be surrounded again by the moans of the dying. Can I ask you precisely why you're a patient here? It's the pain, sir. The drugs don't work. It just hurts under the scars, if you get my drift. Right, the phantom pains. Says you're healthy. Can I do anything for your pain? Nurses gave me a bunch of pills. No effect. Told you. It's like the flames are under my skin, burning away. Who is treating you? Is someone in particular looking after your case? Nobody since the old and tired doctor spoke to me. Started to think I was forgotten about. Wouldn't blame you. You don't seem worried by that. My face hurts so much more when I smile or cry. I've learned it's easier not to speak. 
but be assured I'm smiling inside. Ah, kind of look like a ghoul too. Why do you feel responsible for the injury, Thomas? What really happened? I wasn't disfigured by any German shells. It happened during my leave. It was an accident. Huh. Tell me what really happened then. I went with a whore in Rouen. Dead drunk I was. The hotel was a shithole. There was a fire that night. Did you start the fire? Were you trying to avoid going back to the front? That's not uncommon, you know. No. It's just that I was asleep when the flames reached the room. The girl was long gone. Bitch never woke me up. Left me to burn. Jesus. Why lie about it? Come on. It's one thing to come back disfigured by the Germans. And it's another to get injured in an accident that could have happened to anybody. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, forever. Ah, uh, hmm. Nah. Reconstructive surgery has been very successful for some soldiers. I don't want to wear a bloody mask for the rest of my life. I'd rather stay here and just be forgotten. Hint failed. Shit. Sorry, ma'am. Uh, didn't mean to fail your hint there, pal. Where were you stationed, sir? Did you serve for long? I really don't want to talk about all this shit. No offense. I was pushing too much. I served in France myself. I just wanted to know what happened to you. You were an officer, weren't you? Then I doubt we fought the same war, sir. No offense. How close are you to Miss Hawcroft? Are you aware that she thinks she is a vampire? To wait for her next nibble is the best reason to stay here. Every time she approaches my bed, she treats me like something tasty. A normal person. Aren't you afraid? She may hurt you if the game goes too far. She's quite harmless, I can assure you. Her head's broken inside, is all. My arm busted on the outside. But she's still beautiful. Living proof that there's hope for me. Huh. That's... A weird way to look at it, but yeah, I guess that works out. So do you let her bite you? You know that's not sanitary. And why not? She's only supping a few drops of me blood. And the pain, it's real for once. She could decide to bite less willing patients. Then it's another good reason for me to stay here, Doctor. You do realize she's mentally disturbed. It's called the Kotar Syndrome. She truly believes she's a vampire. In her madness, she never refers to my scars. And frankly, if I could, I'd join her world. It seems much more fun than the real one. Yeah, fantasy worlds, man. That's how they work. Goodbye for now, Mr. Elwood. They have disgust on every street corner. The daily routine. I wish I could be sick again. Blood boil with the fever. Oh, paper. <gasps> About the use of garlic and wooden steaks. Oh, hell yeah. More hot lore. About the use of garlic and wooden steaks. Dear brothers, I must now draw your attention to a very important point. The use of garlic as a protection against vampires. Let's be crystal clear on the subject. Garlic will never protect you against those creatures. No matter how fresh, how strong, or how smelly, garlic is totally useless as a defense. I can never say enough how damaging that novel from Bram Stoker, or Stoker has been. Yes, of course, population of Slavic countries place garlic cloves in coffins. Yes, of course, inhabitants of Santorini Island hang garlic on their windows. There will be so much to write about this place in some day soon. I hope to go back to this island to further explore its occult tradition. But that is not to protect the living from the devil. It is to tell the dead that they are aware of their malevolence. It is a symbol. Nothing more, nothing less. So, please, by all means, yes, wear garlic, show garlic, hang garlic, and tell
Tell the shadows that you're not afraid. But if you're looking for supernatural protection, you'll have to search much deeper into the forgotten secrets of the occult tradition. For here is the truth. My fellow brothers, garlic does not repel vampire, but all the fresh plants will hurt them. It's as if their body could not stand the presence of botanical elements. I have seen an enraged vulp flee when whacked with a rose. Yes, a simple rose. I've witnessed a violent econ fall down and beg for mercy when stuck by a wooden stake. I don't know why it is so effective. and I would give my left arm to find the answer to that mystery. But the truth remains nevertheless. Vampires are very sensitive to fresh herbs, plants, and woods. From Facing the Shadows in How and Why by Usher. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it at that. All right. Well, uh, double checking you. Good evening, Miss Howcroft. How are you tonight? I need blood, Doctor. Warm, rich, vibrant blood. Cool. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, tell me about Thomas Elwood. Tell me, Thelma. Why do you feel so attached to Mr. Elwood? Why him? I'm... I I'm not sure, Doctor. I think we have a bond of some sort. We've both suffered so much. He's the only mortal I... I find interesting. Aw, oh, you love him. Would you say you and Mr. Elwood are romantically involved? No. No, Thomas is a delicate soul. <laughs> Even though he disguises it. But I am not the woman he needs. <laughs> no, for I am a vampire, Doctor. Right, of course. Do you want to make him a vampire? Do you plan to make him a vampire too? Of course not. How could I inflict my curse on anybody else? I'm not that cruel, Doctor. Mm, fair enough. Well, I'm glad you got these things out of the way in your brain. I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. Time has lost its effect on Great gal, but truly. Alright, you're safe. She's just a bit loopy. Not that big a deal. Um, I think everything else has been pretty much sorted here. So, let's go get that, uh, that stuff from the pharmacy. Can I see that map, please? Thank you. Do, oh my gosh, I gotta go out there into the danger zone? That's okay. Take a left, follow the street. We'll be fine. Hey, guys. Goodbye. Oh, wait. I can go down here, too? Uh huh? Oh, this is where I came in, I think. Yeah, it was. That's uh where the boat came in. I was on that boat. It was a steamboat. It was tiny. But it was cute. I can run forever. Oh. Hey. Ooh. It's locked. I'll never get in there ever. Hello. Are you guys evil? They have a stick. They're totally evil. Die, vermin! How did he know I was a vermin? They're level 10? Who said you could be level 10? Ah, fuck it, that'll work. What? What? Oh, oh god. Oh, gee, Willikers. Okay, that's fine. I am, uh, a little rusty, it seems. Let them boom. That's better. And here, just, uh, go, go ahead and whack me a little bit. What? Go ahead and whack me again. Thanks. I really wanted this. Much better. Whew. Okay. See, it's okay that I kill them because they're bandits with no story. It's different. It's not the same thing. Ooh. I don't suppose I can go in these houses. But it's nice to know that I can look at them. I really need to see if I can actually see... Whoa. Rookie. Here, let's not go that way. What's the safest route? Just go this way, then. But yeah, I need to see... Okay, so that's a lid. Okay, doesn't look like that really helps me see it, either. I was seeing if, like, in the vampire senses, it would make it even more noticeable that I could loot these things. Would have been a nice feature, but it's not a feature. But, you know, that's okay. It's, it's okay to not have these things as features. Fuck. Hey. I mean, 
mean, I think that was pretty cool. Oh, that was embarrassing. Oh, I'm out of stamina. That explains why I couldn't do things. Uh, go ahead and whack me. Thanks. Again. Alright, one more time. Okay, again. Again. Thanks. Just gotta work on the timing. Also, you know what? I've come to the executive decision. Executive decision that button needs to be switched. Executive decision that I'm gonna use this darn freaking sword. Because it's cool looking. Look at this thing. I mean, I'm assuming it's cool looking. All right, I, I genuinely don't know, but I'm pretty sure it is. Also, give me my shotgun. Whoa. Okay. I apparently have an, a gun as well. Uh, you yeah, see, um, ignore the gun. Okay, the, the sword though. Look at this thing. It's a sword. That's cool. And I can shoot people if I wanted to, too, so it kind of works out. And also, the sword it itself is only like a little bit stronger than the basic thing anyway. So I don't think it's too much of a bad deal to do that. I think. I hope so. All right, we're getting closer. I'm sure it's around here somewhere. Hey! If I'm quiet enough, I can just do this. Griffin! You fool! Oh, I did not target them first. That's embarrassing. Here. Okay. Whoa! Whoa! Okay. Okay, this- oh, I could die! I could die here! Holy shit! They teleport too! Wait, I have an ability! RT! What? I'm dead! Okay, so that one, it didn't work out too hot that time. That's okay. You know? It, it happens. I can still use this shotgun. I did not use my RT ability at all. I need to do that. Uh, I forgot about it. And I, this is my first time. So, maybe it'll be okay. Give it, give it a little nibble. Back the fuck out. Dash in there. Be a badass. Give him the juice. Boom them all up. Come to me if you want to live. Okay, you do a dash? That's fucked up, man. That was cool. I'm playing Blood War now, and I'm dead. <laughs> okay. Okay, so realistically speaking in this situation, uh, I'm level 5, these things are level 16. I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to come back and do this shit later. But... The second guy needs to go. He's the biggest issue I got right now in my life. Actually, it might not even be a second guy. I think it's just like a shadow clone jutsu. It is a shadow clone jutsu. Got it. There we fucking go. He was just a Naruto the whole time. That explains why it was so complicated and I couldn't find the other guy. All right, that wasn't so bad. Once you actually get the actual combat down. Are you the dude that was supposed to deliver the goods? 
Dr. Strickland's List, ordered by Dr. Thorell. See, I always found his name kind of strange, too. Thorell? I'm guessing it's something that wouldn't be a thing in America. Uh, Strickland, Pembroke Hospital, list of substances and ingredients. Bunch of shit. One of them's opium. Opium is one of the main ingredients of Strickland's medication. Never a good move. Damn, Strickland. But I got Thorell's tart trait. That sounds neat. Sure. Either way, I'm pretty happy I got that done. I, I was a little worried that I'd have to come back because it's level 16, but the thing is, uh, I ain't no punk bitch, so I'll commit. I'll finish this shit. Yeah, dog. Um, you. Oh, seen that already. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I guess we just go back now. Yeah, unless there's anything else in this area. Uh, there's a hide- there's just hideouts. Can I fast travel? Is that a thing? It's not. How about investigations? Um, you. Oh, just did that one. And that's at the hospital, I believe? Right? Yes. Alright, well, just heading back to the hospital. Everything's looking good. I'm digging it. Can't go inside there. I like that they modeled the inside of them, though. That's nice. A little extra touch of detail, because... I don't know how many fucking games I play where everything's just boarded up and you can never even see inside. I mean, I know why they do it. It just, you know, kind of sucks because you want to just see more of the actual world. So good for them. Anyway, I got their stuff, so they better love me. Also, who are you? Good evening, sir. So it is true. The famous Dr. Reed has joined us. I can't think of any better news during these terrible times. Do we know each other? Actually, yes. We met once before at the Rockefeller University in New York. Dr. Tippett, yes, I remember. I was assisting Professor Carell in his research about coronary bypasses. He had nothing but praise for you. He was also very confident about your future. And look at you now. Eminent surgeon and blood transfusion specialist. I was looking for you, Tippets. I saw you you have a room right next to my room, so you know I, I want to know what your life was like. You're exhausted. What? He looks perfectly healthy. I guess we learned he was exhausted from somebody. What is the Pembroke Hospital situation? And please speak freely. This hospital is not exactly the best of London. I'm sure you are used to working in a better environment. Eh, you know. Mm. It's more than enough. In any case, the personnel of a hospital are much more important to me than the building. Don't be misled by appearances, Dr. Reed. This hospital does not lack talented people. It just lacks hope. Hope is very important. What can you tell me about the staff in the hospital? Some are really good, and others are not so good. But during this troubled period, there is no time for slander. I prefer to focus on the positive character traits. I like you a lot. Tell me more about cherished people, then. Nurse Branigan is a pearl. She is the most helpful and dedicated nurse I've ever worked with. A clever and cheerful woman. You really seem to admire her skills. I'll go even further. If she was a man, she would be a damn fine practitioner. That's a good praise. Any opinion about the management? I don't always agree with Dr. Swansea's reserve, but I must admit he does all he can to keep this facility running during this crisis. Ah yes, the burden of command. I was fed up with this concept while serving as a medical officer. Don't get me wrong. Swansea's a good administrator. I just wish he would get out of his office down again. Yeah, I miss him too. I'll hit that blue in a bit. I'm gonna hit that blue right now. You're exhausting yourself, Corcoran. Maybe you should think about preserving your strength. No. We must keep on healing all those poor souls. We are the last rampart before chaos. Once more, unto the breach. Nurse Branigan is worried about you, Doctor. Huh. She should not have told you that. 
I will have a word with her. You don't have to blame her for her honesty. <laughs> I'm not that kind of man, my dear Jonathan. Actually, Nurse Brannigan's opinion is the only one I may listen to. That's a good sign, right? I think so. Right, we're, we're good there. Goodbye, Dr. Tippett. Brannigan, come back. I think you... Are you... Did you... Who are you? Oh, this is Cox. Good evening, Mr. Cox. Dr. Reed. Still working at night, I see. I like that. And why is that? People who don't sleep at night always seem more alive to me. More interesting, one way or another. Oh, thank God. I'm only awake during the night, so that's perfect. I really gotta work on getting that treatment down. Uh, tell me more. I almost ate your blood, by the way. It was gonna be great. Do you ever think about that poor fellow I saw you push in the water? The wound he gave me will make sure I don't forget him. It still fucking hurts. Boss, it cut me good. What did he want? Revenge? I recently had to kill his brother. Poor asshole thought it would be easy to return the favor. Aw, oh, man. Damn it. I was hoping there was, there was a misunderstanding. Son of a bitch. Only the strongest survive, then. Survival at all costs. Is that all you think about? I'm the toughest bastard you'll ever meet, Dr. Reed. And I don't give a fuck what you think of me. That man was determined to murder you. You almost died. What a surprise. The first time I met him, he nearly shit himself. Fucking coward. Oh, I guess revenge gives you balls. Good lord. How is your hospitalization going, Mr. Cox? This is a shitty place with shitty staff. But as long as I'm treated all right, I'll be fine. What's wrong with the Pembroke staff? That bastard you sent to bring me here, Milton. I thought he was going to break all my bones before I reached my bed. I see. Any other smart comments? The nurses aren't too ugly. Especially that foxy one, Nurse Crane. Pretty brunette, tough attitude, all like that. I bet she loves you. What's wrong with the hospital? Come on, Dr. Reed. The place is a dump. Smelly, sad, and dirty. But you're alive thanks to the efforts and dedication of the staff here, aren't you? What are you expecting, a medal? I thought that saving lives was just part of the job. Must be an unsatisfactory profession at this time, I'm sure. Oh man, I could have nibbled you so hard, dude. How long do you think you can escape the law, Clay? I know this city like the back of my hand, Doc. I know its streets, who to pay, who to avoid, and who to bully. I won't get caught. Hmm. Oh shit, damn. Damn. Wow. We can't escape the consequences of our actions. The past catches up with us in the end. I ain't afraid of death. I don't hide who I am. I live my life honestly, which is more than I could say for most folks. And who are you then? I'm the leader of the Wet Boot Boys. One day I'll leave this shitty place and punch in the face all who thought I would not come back. Hmm. Okay. Fair enough, dude. Uh, let me just check real quick. Yeah, you, uh, you do lead them, them boys. Uh, thanks for letting me know. I'll leave you for now, Mr. Cox. Goodness. Hmm. Interesting character. Wonder, uh, how that's gonna turn out. Hey. Oh, you're cool. I, I just got done talking to you. Are you the foxy one? Oh, it's Brannigan. Of course she is. Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. Uh, so, would you like to... I'm not familiar with all the staff yet. Perhaps you could help me. Brilliant professionals. Most of them. Dr. Swansea has a gift for recruiting talent. Most of them? Is there a problem I should know about, Nurse? It would be inappropriate for me to speak ill of a colleague. Oh, right, I never did the speak up bit. Eh, fuck it. 
Nurse Brannigan, if you do know something, please tell me. Anything you say will be held in confidence. No. I may disagree with some conduct, but in the end, everybody is doing their best. Why do they sometimes look at me? The camera. It's weird. Uh, Tippett's likes you. Why does Dr. Tippett's claim you're the main reason he keeps working, despite his fatigue? If it wasn't for him, I probably would have left the Pembroke years ago. Dr. Tippett's does not think of you as just a nurse anymore, does he? If you're suggesting he's not taking my gender into consideration when it comes to medical practice and knowledge, I really hope he doesn't. Oh. Fair enough. Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. I mean, thanks for actually, you know, facing me this time. That was nice of her. Anyway, I should probably, uh, figure out what's going on with this, uh, this poor man with the fucked up arm. I got, uh, your stuff. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? Uh, well. I located the shop, but it was vandalized, and the owner is missing. All I found was your order. I was afraid of such bad news. People are so desperate they're ready to burgle a shop for drugs. That's quite a list you ordered. Opium. Sodium hypochlorite. It can't be just headaches you're trying to cure. It's dreadful influenza, of course. I already ran some tests on hopeless cases. Without success, I must admit. Do you realize you could create a lethal poison without the correct dosage? Then there are the legal ramifications. Is this not true of any medical substance, Dr. Reed? However, if you would agree to improve it, I'd be glad to accept your help. As long as you promise to be scrupulous with your experiments, I may try to gather these substances and even help improve upon the mixture. That's all I'm asking for, Dr. Reed. That's all I'm asking. Huh. Ooh. I want to know about these secret tests you run. And if they can save people from this epidemic, speak to me now, Thoreau. I know I may sound presumptuous, but I'm just following your steps, Dr. Reed. I'm casting away the shadows of ignorance by daring to face them. Self-confidence is essential in our line of work, my young colleague, but only if tempered with the correct amount of cynicism. But you never doubt yourself, Dr. Reed. I've read all your articles and books. You performed the most daring research during the war. I think we're making a madman. Uh, why not, you know, uh, take a break? Don't you think we have enough work already? Perhaps now is not the best time to be chasing shadows. Chasing shadows, really? It's funny those words coming from the only doctor here who has spent more time outside this hospital than in. I mean, kind of. Can I do this again and try something else? No, no. Damn, yep, you're locked into it. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. Damn, you really gotta go, like, full in on these things. I can't let Strickland put his patients at risk with opium. Perhaps an adjusted formula will deliver more of a placebo effect. Huh. Placebos tend to work because, for some fucking reason, the brain is absolutely insane and just heals its its own body sometimes by believing it's gonna work it's it's crazy man the human body is a very odd sponge cells